there are three different types of spectroscopy that we need to know about that can all give us different types of information about a molecule. So IR spectroscopy is uh, uses infrared radiation that causes bonds to bend and stretch, but it doesn't actually break any bonds because there isn't enough energy. These changes provide information on the functional groups that are present in the molecule. The IR spec does not actually tell us where the functional groups are located. In order to see these different um, spectrum, we can look at our IB data booklet in section 26. So we, here we have the data from table 26 in your IB data booklet, and here we have a typical IR spectra. This is for butanoic acid. Now, the first thing we have to note is that from 300 to approximately 1400, over here, we have the fingerprint section. This section is not really too useful to us. Um, so let's look at this spectrum and see what we actually have. The first peak we see is right here at approximately 1700 nanometers. Now, if we go to our table over here, we see that we have a C double bond O that has a strong peak at approximately 1700 to 1750. So that matches up very nicely. So we likely have a C double bond O, which could be an aldehyde, a ketone, carboxylic acid, acid or an ester. Strong, medium, and weak refer to the amount of transmittance or the height of the peak. So a strong peak would have a very uh, high degree of absorption or very low degree of transmittance. Broad refers to the width of the peak. So we see we have a very broad peak that is also very strong and it starts approximately at around 2500 and goes to well over 3000. This strong broad peak corresponds well with our carboxylic acid hydrogen bond. The OH on a carboxylic acid has a strong broad peak from 2500 to 3000 nanometers. It could also correspond with possibly an alcohol, but the peak would start a little bit later. And so from this, we can see that we have a carboxylic acid. It doesn't tell me anything else about the molecule, but it does tell me that I have a carboxylic acid, which is true about butanoic acid. Proton NMR gives us information about the different environments of hydrogen. CH3 has one environment. Something that has a CH2 is a different environment to the CH3. Something that has a COH is something different still. So we have multiple different hydrogen environments in our organic compounds. The spectrum position of the NMR signal is compared to a standard, um, and we term it the chemical shift. This is just how far it is shifted compared to that standard. Hydrogens in different environments have different shifts, and it actually gives us a better idea of what is present in the molecule. Finally, we have the integration trace, um, which can be shown with either bars or numbers or a uh, line or a stepped line that tells us how many hydrogen atoms are present within that uh, chemical shift. We're going to analyze an HNMR spectrum um, for a compound C3H6O. Now with this compound we have to maybe look at the IHD. So let's do that from our previous lesson. C3H6O 0 0.5 times by 2 times the number of carbons plus 2 minus the number of hydrogens, 6. And we get 8 divided by 2, which is equal to 1. So there's either one double bond or a ring structure. And because there's only three carbons, it's more likely that there's a double bond. So now we look at the H NMR spectra, and we see that we have uh, 
a peak at right around one part per million for our chemical shift. Now, here is our data from section 27 of your IB data booklet, and I've just cut out the most important section. So a peak from 0.9 to 1 shows that we have a CH3 group somewhere. CH3 must be present in the molecule. Now if I keep looking at my chemical shift, my next one here has a peak at around 2.5. Now that has an uh, integration shift or integration number of two which means two hydrogens are present so I must be looking for H2s in my NMR data from my data booklet and when I look for H2s I see that the one that has a chemical shift of somewhere around 2.5 is for this C double bond O to a CH2 so now I know I also have a CH2 which is bonded to a C which has a double bond O on it. Finally, I have a shift with one hydrogen down here. My integration number is one. So I have a shift with one hydrogen way down at around 9.7. And I look for a single hydrogen or proton environment. And I must only, I must have a shift of around nine to 10. And so I see that this must be this aldehyde functional group, the R, C, double bond, O, H. So if I put this H here, it matches nicely with this peak. This CH2 matches nicely with that peak. My CH3 matches nicely with that peak. So I can determine from the HNMR spectra what this molecule actually is. Mass spec is the last one we need to know. And in mass spec, what we do is we vaporize a sample and then we use an electron beam to either turn it into an ion, which will give me the total uh, molar mass of the compound, or we can also fragment the compound into smaller sections. And this gives us more information on where the functional groups are located. The uh, IB data booklet has a list of their smaller fragments and their masses in section 28. We're going to look at the mass spectrum for C2H4O. Again, we can do the IHD for this, and we see 0 0.5 times 2 times 2 plus 2 minus 4, and we get an IHD of 1. So again, we have one double bond present or a ring, but with only two carbons, we can't have a ring. Now, we see some peaks here. The first one we want to highlight is the largest peak at the end of the spectrum. This will correspond with the molar mass of the compound. If we look at the compound, 12 for carbon plus 4 for hydrogen plus 16 for oxygen gives me a total of 44. And we see our largest peak at the end of our spectrum, molar mass is equal to 44, so that corresponds very nicely. Now, we can look for some other peaks of this molecule. The first one we're gonna look at is the peak at 29. We look at the one that is very high in relative intensity. The other ones are from isotopes or loss of a hydrogen, and they're not really that important. So we look for the strongest peaks in each section. This peak at 29 could represent two different possibilities, either a CH3, CH2, or a CHO. Now, because I only have two carbons and four hydrogens, that CH3, CH2 is impossible. So I must have a CH O molecule or functional group present. Now we're going to move on to our last functional group here and we're looking again at the highest peak and it's 15 so that tells me I have a CH3 fragment that was lost. So I also have a CH3 that's present. Now when I look at both of those I can combine them to figure out what that actual molecule must look like. CH3 must be bonded to my C, which has a hydrogen and an oxygen that can't be an alcohol. It must be a double bonded oxygen and that single bonded hydrogen. So we have, those are our three types 
of spectrums that we have to be able to analyze and use to determine what type of compound we are working with. To practice this, there are a bunch more questions in your workbook. Please have a look and do those. Um, and if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to send me an email, post something on the classroom page, or uh, we can have a Google Meet, which we'll have during office hours.